In Dynamic Shift Simulator 3, PvP is one of the most fun things to take part in, however it is also one of the most complicated things to take part in. In this video, I will be going over all of the different aspects of PvP and explaining them so that the next time you get into a fight, you have a much higher chance of coming out on top. The first PvP aspect I will go over also happens to be the most simple. Found on most PvP ships is a gun. A lot of people think that guns aren't very important and that they're only a last resort, however if you use them correctly it can turn the tide of a battle. Because there is no way to automatically log onto another ship with a gun, it is best to use your guns when you are too close to the enemy ship to use your missiles. When firing at your opponent, it is important to keep in mind how much distance is between you and the enemy. At long distances, putting your crosshair directly on the enemy ship will in most cases resort in the shot missing. Instead, aim your crosshair slightly above and in front of where the ship is, this way the round will hit the ship. Another thing to keep in mind is that some guns don't deal enough damage to make them an effective way to damage the enemy, and some guns don't even do damage at all. Ships such as the Bisbee class Corvette have a very weak gun, and the S100 class Snowboat and Petroba River Mark II can't even damage other ships with their guns. Guns are very important in PvP. If you are able to accurately hit your opponent with your guns at long range or even close range, you will be able to deal a lot more damage than your enemy might be able to. Missiles are an important part of PvP, so it is important to know when or when not to use them. Missiles are an effective way to deal a lot of damage to most ships in the game, however advanced ships such as the Ivory Hoodfeld and the Zevin Provincing class frigates have multiple forms of missile defense and as a result are pretty much immune to missiles. All missiles have a minimum firing range of 1 nautical mile, however this can be bypassed and I will show you how to do that in just a few minutes. When you have PvP on, with almost every PvP ship, you will see an icon appear above the enemy ship. Clicking this icon will open a small menu that will show you the different types of guided armaments you can fire at them. To fire a guided missile, make sure you are at least one nautical mile away from your enemy. Then, click the missile option and select how many missiles you would like to fire. Once you have selected the amount, you can hit the fire button and the missiles will be fired. It is important to familiarize yourself with what type of countermeasures each ship has, that way you can know what the chances of a missile actually hitting your target are. I will talk more about countermeasures in the upcoming countermeasures section. Torpedoes are another very important aspect of PvP. Almost every PvP ship in the game has at least some type of torpedo, so knowing how to use them is important. Torpedoes are another way to deal a large amount of damage to your opponents, however they are a lot more difficult to counter in comparison to missiles. Many people think that torpedoes are only effective in anti-submarine warfare, however they are also very effective against ships too, as it forces your opponent to focus on countering the torpedoes and are often very devastating when fired in high quantity. To fire a torpedo, open the targeting menu and press torpedo. You can then select how many torpedoes you would like to fire. Once you're ready to fire the torpedoes, press the fire button. To use torpedoes in the most effective way, fire a couple, wait a few seconds, and then fire some more. You do not want to fire a lot at once. Firing only a couple at a time will make it much harder for an enemy noisemaker or decoy to distract many torpedoes at once. Although there is really no reason to, torpedoes can still be fired manually. Depth Chargers are able to be found on a few different ships in the game and are very effective on submarines only. Depth Chargers can in no way damage ships. Depth Chargers are able to be dropped or fired into the ocean and will explode when they come close to a submarine. However, normal Depth Chargers are often very difficult to use due to you needing to be right above the submarine. The Krivak is the only ship in the game equipped with the RBU-6000 rocket propelled Depth Chargers. The Krivak is able to fire Depth Chargers much further, accurately, and easier than any other ship in the game. This is because the RBU RBU-6000s are able to be aimed, fired relatively far away from your ship, and sink fast. The only downside of the RBU-6000s is that you are not able to fire them too close to your own ship, and if the submarine is moving, you must manually lead the depth chargers so they hit the sub. Countermeasures are arguably one of the most important things to have perfected when going into battle. Using countermeasures correctly can mean the difference between life and death. There are six different types of countermeasures in DSS-3, SeaWiz, VLS, Noisemakers, Decoys, Mossmark 70, and Shaft. SeaWiz, or Close-In Weapon System, is a weapon system that can be found on a few different ships in DSS-3. This weapon system will detect enemy missiles and attempt to shoot them down. The success rate for shooting down missiles varies depending on what type of SeaWiz is being used. The Ivor SeaWiz has an 80% success rate, the Dezevan SeaWiz has a 70% success rate, and every other SeaWiz in the game has a 50% success rate. VLS, or Vertical Launching System, is another counter to enemy missiles. Although in the real world, VLS does not directly refer to an anti-missile system, in DS S3 it almost always does. When an enemy missile is detected, a separate missile will be fired from your ship to intercept the incoming missile. 
As of the time I am making this video, four ships are currently equipped with a VLS system. The Ivor Huitfeldt, the Zevin Provincin, the Type 21 with its base skin, and the Adelaide skin for the Oliver Hazard Parry. Noisemakers can be found on nearly every PvP ship in the game, and are a counter to incoming torpedoes. Deploying a noisemaker will distract incoming torpedoes and draw them towards the noisemaker instead of towards your ship. Note that noisemakers will only work if the torpedoes come close to them. Chaff is a small canister of debris that can be fired into the air and detonated. Once detonated, incoming missiles will be drawn towards the debris field instead of your ship. Moss Mark 70 is a type of countermeasure found on nearly every submarine in the game. A Moss Mark 70 is a torpedo that you can fire, however, instead of being used to damage other ships or submarines, it distracts enemy torpedoes. To use a Moss Mark 70, fire it towards the incoming torpedoes and they will be drawn towards it. The last type of countermeasure are decoys. Decoys are a type of countermeasure currently only found on the Ivor Huitfeldt and the Zevin Provincin class frigates. When deployed, incoming missiles and torpedoes will be drawn towards it. The decoys on the Ivor will fire in this pattern, two on the left, then two on the right. The De Zevin will fire one on the left and then one on the right. The decoy will despawn once being hit. Next, I will go over a few different tactics you can use in your fights to get the edge over your enemy. The first tactic I will talk about is stern locking. Stern locking is when you use a ship that is the same speed as or faster than your opponent's ship in order to stay close behind their stern. This is most commonly done with small and fast boats such as the Schulte class corvettes, Wilmos class missile boat, and Sparviero class patrol boat. Once you're at your opponent's stern, you will repeatedly fire your cannon at them. For obvious reasons, you do not want to attempt stern locking ships equipped with guns able to shoot towards the stern. Now if you are the one being stern locked, your best hope at defeating the enemy is by firing torpedoes at them. When you fire a torpedo at them, they will either be forced to take the hit or try to evade it. If they try to evade the torpedo, this will most likely give you a chance to escape the ship that was stern locking you and give you a chance at sinking them. Another great way to counter stern locking is by firing a missile at them. To do this, fire a missile at the water in front of them and the missile will most likely end up hitting them. The smoke cloud from the explosion can also help you escape since the smoke will block their vision for a couple of seconds. The next tactic I will go over is how to fire a missile at your opponent when you are closer than one nautical mile away from them. As I'm sure you know, you are not able to use a targeting menu to fire a missile at someone when you are closer than one nautical mile to them. However, by manually firing a missile in front of the enemy ship, you will sometimes be able to hit them. If you want to fire a missile at someone that is very close to you, fire the missile at the water in front of them. Note that the water does have to be quite deep for this to work. Stealth is a feature currently found on a few PvP ships and all submarines. To be in stealth mode while using a ship, you have to be going below a certain speed, however this speed varies depending on what ship you are using. On screen now, you can see each ship that has stealth as well as the speed you have to be going under for that ship to have stealth activated. You can pause the video if needed. Stealth for submarines, however, is a lot more complicated than stealth for ships. Whether or not you are stealthy in a submarine depends on how deep you are, how fast you're going, and how far away you are from the person using sonar. When stealth is activated, you will not show up on radar, meaning enemy ships will not be able to use the targeting menu to fire at you. You will also not appear on the map. Something to keep in mind is that if you fire your weapons or turn on an active sonar, you will break stealth. When you have radar activated, you will be able to detect ships not in stealth mode and fire at them using the targeting menu. For ships, radar is something that is always on, however if you are using a submarine, you have to be near the surface and going rather slow in order to deploy your radar mast. When your radar mast is deployed, you can then detect other ships. In DSS-3, there are two different types of sonar, passive sonar and active sonar. If you aren't using active sonar, you will always be using passive sonar. When you are using passive sonar, you will not be able to detect enemy submarines unless they are using active sonar. When using passive sonar, you will also not be giving away your position to the enemies. By pressing this button in the bottom right of your screen, you can enable active sonar. When active sonar is enabled, you will be able to detect other submarines by sending out sonar pings and as a result, be able to use the targeting menu on them. Now these sonar pings are very loud, so when you have active sonar enabled, other submarines and even ships will be able to hear you. When active sonar is enabled, your vision underwater will also greatly increase. Something to keep in mind is that if an enemy submarine or ship is right behind you, you will not be able to detect them by using active sonar due to your screw making too much noise. If you are in a colonial battle, there are a few things you want to keep in mind. There are three different types of firing orders you can choose from when firing your cannons. Rolling stern, rolling bow, and random order. 
When you first spawn a colonial ship, the firing order will start off as rolling stern. However, if you click on it, it can be changed to rolling bow or random order. Rolling stern means the cannons will fire from the stern first, and rolling bow means they will fire from the bow first. Random order means that the cannons will fire in, well, a random order. One of the most important things to try to do in a colonial battle is reduce your hitbox as much as possible. When you're not firing and you are able to, try to make sure you have either your bow or stern facing directly at your opponent. That way, they will have a much harder time hitting you since your hitbox is a lot smaller. Another thing that's good to know is that some colonial vessels have stern and or bow chasers. These cannons are good to use when you are switching which way you're facing, as when you're turning around, you will point your bow or stern at your opponent. Lastly, in order to go as fast as possible, you should know how the compass works. These lines on the compass indicate that the wind is coming from that direction. Another way you can tell the direction of wind is by looking at which way the flags are moving. The sails on colonial wind ships are pretty complicated, however, as long as you aren't going directly at those lines, you should be fine. Lastly, once you fire a cannon, a timer will appear above it. This timer will count down until you are able to fire the cannon again. Now, those are all of the main aspects of PvP, however, I will now go over a few different tips that I think are important to know. One very important thing to know is how to repair and rearm your ship. To do this, find a red circle on the map that says Shipyard. Then, pilot your vessel to it. You can then go inside of the shipyard and pay to rearm and or repair your ship. Once you leave the shipyard, you will have anti-kill enabled for one minute. Anti-kill is also enabled for one minute when you first spawn your ship. When anti-kill is activated, you will not be able to be damaged and you will not be able to fire your weapons. When turning on PvP or switching PvP modes, there will be a 10 second timer you will first have to wait through. This 10 second timer is also in place for removing your ship while you have PvP on. When you get above 50% damage, fire has a chance to break out on your ship. The fire will continue to damage your ship in intervals as long as it doesn't get put out. If you put out some of the fires, the damage you take will go down, and if you put out all of the fires, you will stop taking damage altogether. You can put out fires by either using the fire boat or by using the fire extinguisher which is in the extra tools game pass. The game pass costs 30 robux. A good thing to know is that you cannot damage or be damaged by other ships in your fleet. Another good thing to know is that if you have pvp on and you leave the game, your ship will remain in the game for another 15 seconds at 95% damage. Something I often see people struggling with is how to fire the sea licks on the Krivak. To fire the sea licks, you must fire them using the targeting menu. The sea licks will not show up in the weapons bar at the bottom of your screen. Another thing I've seen people confused about is just what is the Celix. The Celix is a missile and torpedo combination. When fired, the missile will fire and once it's around halfway to the target, it will drop the torpedo. The missile will then continue its path and try to connect with its target. The reason there is a torpedo is so you can fire the Celix at submarines and quickly deliver the torpedo as well as hit them with the missile if they are surfaced. On the topic of armament, the Fletcher class destroyer's torpedoes have to be fired manually, but they will lock onto enemy ships once they get close enough to them. The same thing also goes for the S100 class snowboat. Also, the Oliver Hazard Perry's VLS is worse than the VLS on other ships. When the VLS fires, it still has a 100% success rate, however the VLS tends to fire less than the VLS on other ships. When using a periscope, if you click T while looking at a ship, the targeting icon will appear above them. This is especially useful for when a ship is in stealth mode. On the topic of targeting, icons, if the icon is green, it means that person is in your fleet. If it is yellow, it means they have PvP on, and if it is orange, it means they have PvP off. Lastly, in the description, I have linked these two pages. These pages display a bunch of different things, such as damage values, rearm costs, and each PvP ship's armament. These pages are extremely useful, so I recommend that you take a look at them. I will now compare some of the best ships in their respective categories. The Ivor Hoodfeld and the Zevin Provincen are the two best warships in the game. The Ivor has more missiles and chaff as well as a slightly better sea whiz, while the De Zevin Provincen has more VLS. It is worth noting that both ships' guns do the same damage per minute, however the De Zevin only has one slow firing gun while the Ivor has two fast firing guns. These ships also have the same top speed. The Ivor has two skins at its disposal, Absalon and Arrowhead. The Absalon skin adds one Sea Whiz and removes one gun. The remaining gun is also replaced with a larger, more powerful gun. Although the gun is more powerful, it does have a lower damage per minute in comparison to the two normal guns on the base skin. 
The Arrowhead skin gets rid of all torpedoes, the Sea Whiz, and some missiles. The two guns are also replaced with smaller, faster firing guns. One gun is also added at the stern, where the Sea Whiz would normally be. The Absalon skin has better anti-air capabilities, and the Arrowhead skin has been optimized for close quarters combat. The base skin for the Ivor is the best of both worlds, being good for offense and defense. The Dezevan Provincian's only skin adds one extra Sea Whiz above the bridge and replaces the gun with one that fires ever so slightly slower. This skin is a direct upgrade Upgrade from the base variant. Next, I will compare the two best submarines, the Los Angeles and Trafalgar class SSNs. The Los Angeles has more torpedoes than the Trafalgar, however the Trafalgar's torpedoes deal slightly more damage and have an insane speed of 80 knots. Nothing can outrun these torpedoes. The Los Angeles and Trafalgar both have missiles, however the Los Angeles has two more than the Trafalgar, having a total of 12. The Trafalgar's top speed is two knots faster than the LA's. Because of the Trafalgar's speed, it is able to outrun ships like the Ivor and De Zevin, making it good for quickly attacking your enemy and then getting out. For the last comparison, I will compare the United States class Super Frigate and the Ardent class Third Rate. The Ardent has more health and more cannons, however is big and slow. The cannons on the Ardent are also quite difficult to aim. The United States is faster and has stronger cannons, however has less health. Also, half of the cannons on the United States can't fire at long ranges. The United States' yellow ochre skin adds two bow chasers. With all of that out of the way, that concludes my PvP guide. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you found this guide helpful. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe, as I spent a very long time putting this video together. Also, if you would like to join my Discord server, feel free to click the invite link in the description. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye!